Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Artificial DM. So today, we're bringing you part two of Rishinger's tale, DMs Never Railroad, ever, except when they do. Part one was read by RPG Tales, and part three is read by Z Flacco. Part one link is gonna be here, and part three link will be at the end of the video. Anyway, let's get into the story in RPG Horror Stories. So this is the continuation of our lovely journey with characters who never get railroaded and can play as wanted. Summary of players. The Impartial DM. The Warlock with Pact of the Blade. The Paladin who right now isn't noteworthy. The Dwarf Fighter with a plus two longsword that changes depending on the race holding it. Me, the Changeling Monk. And a previously unmentioned character, a Tortle Cleric who has a minor role to play. Noteworthy out of character points. Between sessions 2 and 3, my changeling monk had somehow learned that one of the survivors from the cave was the child of the richest merchant in town. So she decides to impersonate this child and infiltrate his house to steal all their valuables. Between sessions 2 and 3, the DM has decided forcing locks open via strength isn't allowed anymore. Any lock must be open using lockpicks. Which for someone who was planning on breaking into a mansion was a bit of a setback. But not a major one, I thought. Boy, was I wrong. The Paladin had also mentioned he'd love to get his hands on some plate mail armor. And of course, two sessions in, everyone is now fully aware out of character that my character is a changeling. We were all given a little backstory between sessions. The reason our party was hired to investigate this cave is because hundreds of villagers had gone missing and they no longer had the guards or resources to explore it themselves. A point that will come into play very soon. Session 3. I could hear the train coming and it's heading to Alcatraz. So we rejoin for our third session, and the party decides to take all of the surviving villagers from the cave back home. However, being the planner of a mansion heist, I decide to try to convince the party we should visit the inn first, and then learn that I have to outroll every character individually in persuasion. Which, surprisingly, worked on all but the warlock. At which point the DM Lich used suggestion to try to convince me to give up on it, where luckily I got a nat 20, the only luck this session. Then according to the DM, my besting of suggestion was so great, our warlock friend suddenly felt compelled to follow all of us to the end, even though he had passed the check. While this is happening, the paladin finds a key on him which conveniently unlocks a door in the biggest statue in town. He opens the door to find some magical plate mail and a quarterstaff. So he grabs them both and brings them both to the party, only to be informed by the quarterstaff that the warlock serves the chain god and should be killed immediately. Turns out, this magical quarterstaff actually housed a goddess inside it, who is now giving the paladin guidance. Now while this is happening, the newly mentioned turtle has taken an early rest at about 2pm, and my changeling has gone upstairs to convince this merchant's child that assassins are after him and he should stay here overnight, which passes, so I turn to look like him as I leave the room. Then as I start heading downstairs, the dwarf comes looking for me and the child, and being in the disguise of the child, I mention the monk, my character. I actually left out the front door a minute ago to explore the town. But I was ignored as the DM says using the child's character that the monk, my character, was asleep in my room and he shouldn't bother her. But he passes the roll and goes to check, only to find that whoever is in the bed is completely covered by sheets and can't be seen and is fast asleep. Literally five seconds after I've closed the door. So the party is now downstairs with me disguised as the child, and the dwarf convinces me to hold his shiny new sword. Because meta, he's convinced it's me, my character. Which is a bit iffy, but that's not the real problem. The real problem starts when I privately mention to the GM to say that after being held hostage, I don't want to be anywhere near weapons. Makes sense, right? Nope! Instead, the child gladly accepts the weapon, and it doesn't change forms at all, and it only changes forms when certain races touch it. I am all up for a challenge. I was fully prepared to explain how being a changeling in all but appearance, I should be defending how it changes, but no, it doesn't work. Now while all of this is happening, I mentioned to the DM that I haven't had the chance to visit the general store yet, and would like to try to convince the party that the child wants to go there to get some new clothes, when in reality, I now need lockpicks. And surprisingly, I wasn't ignored on this request. However, as with the monkey's paw, any wish shall always be twisted ironically. I was allowed to try to visit the store, however, that was only if I could roll higher than the five other party members one by one for a second time and convince all of them to let me go again. So needless to say, 
the odds of me rolling higher than 5 other player characters and the level 13 DM Lich for a second time was astronomically low, and I failed miserably. So the party gives up and leads his child, me, to the mansion, where I am let in and it is revealed that yes, it is me in disguise, and now begins what we like to call the entry into Alcatraz. We had been talking about this encounter for nearly two weeks, so imagine my surprise when I get loaded into an almost pure white gridded screen with a small map and hearing, I didn't have time to make a map for this. Don't get me wrong, I fully understand map making can be hard and time consuming, but a white grid with almost nothing on it? The least you could do is download a basic map off Google. It takes two seconds. So jump forward again to my monk in this mansion. I get led immediately to my room, and along the way, on a nat 20 and various other high perception rolls, find that the seemingly wealthy merchant doesn't seem to have any items of value in his house. No matter. I just figured they'd be hidden in a harder to reach area. So after being led around, I call for the guard's attention and attempt to use persuasion to convince them to take me to the general store. Nope, they won't have it. So then I ask them to buy me items from the store instead. Nope. They have very strict orders and won't listen to me. Now, here I'm getting a bit annoyed, and I'm slowly hearing the sounds of railroads being laid, so my character takes a long rest and waits until it's dark to break out. Flash forward to midnight, and the turtle who slept at 2pm is still asleep 10 hours later, and it seems the rest of the party are asleep too, putting all the pressure on me to steal from this mansion and leave, so I'm not holding everyone else up. So I go to sneak out of the bedroom at what is now midnight, only to find the father of this child standing right in the doorway, who then asks me what I want, and gets it for me, and then leads me back to my room. So sneaking out that way? No good. That's no good. Then I look out of the window to see if there's any patrolling guards. 18 perception and no, there's none, so I figure great. I'll smash the window and sneak out, because due to his ruling between sessions, the belt of giant strength he gave me won't let me break a single lock. I have to pick all of them with my non-existent lock picks. I cast silence, smash the window so it makes no sound, and a few seconds later I'm being grabbed from behind as apparently a guard and the father are both there and saying something inaudibly which breaks my concentration and at this point, apparently, they figured out I'm an imposter, so I lie and say someone else broke the window. It doesn't work and initiative starts. Now at this point, I'm losing patience as I'm still new to the game, and literally every idea I have is being shot down or countered instantly. So I decide at this point that the rest of the party has been waiting too long for my solo session, so I go, Okay, I'm going to jump out of the window and leave. At which point I get told, Okay, roll acrobatics. What? Turns out, the DM had conveniently forgotten to mention that the window was an oculus window no bigger than my head, and I had to squeeze through or take heavy damage. Now my patience is near the end of its ropes, so I pointed out that had I known this, I never would have cast silence or broken the window, as he was fully aware my plan was to sneak out using this window as an exit, but no, retconning this is forbidden and the guard is attacking. While this is happening, our turtle friend is mentioning he wanted to explore the town, and it's weird, his character has been asleep for 10 hours at this point, but no. For some reason, no one else is allowed to act during the solo time, set aside for me. So I jump out of the window and fall a floor, taking about 24 damage or so, only to find that there were 6 guards and 4 dogs patrolling this part of the manor, with a mage right beneath me. He detected my silence magic by the way. So we have an 18 perception which notices no guards and no dogs around the manor of the wealthiest merchant in town, who didn't have the money to lavishly decorate his house or search for his kidnapped son yet can hire an entire garrison of guards to defend his house. So at this point, I've had enough, and just run back to the inn and call it a day there. And that is how the escape for Alcatraz was railroaded and failed spectacularly. But if you thought that was the worst of it, tune in for the thrilling conclusion in part 3. I don't know about you guys, but I really feel like both OP and the DM are at fault here. It seems like the DM is railroading the players a little bit with his own narrative, but at the same time, it sounds like OP is doing that himself. He's not working together with the group to achieve a goal, and I really don't know what his deal is with the turtle. I'm not sure if that was just he was pointing out that the DM was focusing on him and not the turtle, or what? I don't know. Be sure to let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments below. Thanks again to ZFlaco and RPG Tales for this collaboration. If you haven't seen part one, click this right here.
And to move on and listen to part three, click this link here. That's going to be it for today. And until next time, hope you feel inspired.